The Venerable Bede, as he was known, was born about 673 in the Kingdom of Northumbria, England. He entered the Monastery of St. Peter, at Monkwermouth at the age of seven, and by 685 he had moved to the Sister Monastery of St. Paul, at Jarrow. Bede spent most of his life in the monastery, except for occasional visits to other religious houses, the Archbishop of York, and the King of Northumbria. He spent his time praying, writing, and teaching. Bede was much interested in the question of calculating the date of Easter, and his use of the Anno Domini system of calendar dating, developed by the monk Dionysius Exiguus, helped to spread that system throughout Europe. Bede's most famous work, is his Ecclesiastical History of the English People, which covered English history from the raids of Julius Caesar, in 55 BC, up to the missionary work in Bede's own day. Completed around AD 731, it remains an important work for both religious and secular historians, and earned Bede the nickname, Father of English History. Bede died in 735 at Jarrow, and his legacy was promoted by those he taught, and by other theologians. He was named a Doctor of the Church by Pope Leo XIII, in 1899. According to Gregory's original scheme, London, not Canterbury, was to have been the seat of the primacy of southern England. London and York, being doubtless the most important cities of south and north known to him, from their history during the Roman occupation. But Christianity was not permanently established in London, till it was too late to remove the sea from Canterbury which would obviously commend itself to Augustine, as the most suitable place to be the metropolitan city, with Etherius, archbishop of that city. Then returning into Britain, he sent Laurentius, the priest, and Peter, the monk, to Rome, to acquaint Pope Gregory, that the English nation had received the faith of Christ, and that he was himself made their bishop. At the same time, he desired the solution of some doubts, which seemed urgent to him. He soon received fitting answers to his questions, which we have also thought meet, to insert in this our history. Book 1 Chapter 28 Laurentius succeeded Augustine, in the bishopric. Having been ordained thereto by the latter, in his lifetime, lest, upon his death, the church, as yet in so unsettled a state, might begin to falter, if it should be destitute of a pastor, though but for one hour. Wherein? He also followed the example of the first pastor of the church, that is, of the most blessed Peter, chief of the apostles, who, having founded the church of Christ at Rome, is said to have consecrated Clement to help him in preaching the gospel, and at the same time to be his successor. Book 2. Chapter 4. And when they saw the bishop, whilst celebrating Mass in the church, give the Eucharist to the people, filled, as they were, with folly and ignorance, they said to him, as is commonly reported, Why do you not give us also that white bread, which you used to give to our father, Saba, for so they were wont to call him, and which you still continue to give to the people in the church? To whom he answered, If you will be washed in that font of salvation, in which your father was washed, you may also partake of the holy bread of which he partook. But if you despise the lava of life, you can in no wise receive the bread of life. Book 2 Chapter 5 Draw near then, to the knowledge of him who created you. Who breathed the breath of life into you. Who sent his only begotten Son for your redemption, to save you from original sin. That being delivered from the power of the devil's perversity and wickedness, he might bestow on you a heavenly reward. Hearken to the words of the preachers, and the gospel of God, which they declare to you, to the end that, believing, as has been said before more than once, in God the Father Almighty, and in Jesus Christ his Son, and the Holy Ghost, and the indivisible Trinity. Having put to flight the thoughts of devils, and driven from you the temptations of the venomous and deceitful enemy, and being born again of water and the Holy Ghost, you may, through the aid of his bounty, dwell in the brightness of eternal glory with him, in whom you shall have believed. Book 2. Chapter 10. Now if it please you, Likewise to hear the mystical reason in this matter, we are commanded to keep Easter in the first month of the year. Which is also called the month of new things, because we ought to celebrate the mysteries of our Lord's resurrection and our deliverance, with the spirit of our minds renewed to the love of heavenly things. We are commanded to keep it, in the third week of the same month, 
because Christ himself, who had been promised before the law, and under the law, came with grace, in the third age of the world, to be sacrificed as our Passover. And because rising from the dead, the third day after the offering of his passion, he wished this to be called the Lord's Day. And the Paschal Feast of his resurrection to be yearly celebrated on the same. Because also, we do then only truly celebrate his solemn festival, if we endeavor with him, to keep the Passover, that is, the passing from this world to the Father, by faith, hope, and charity. We are commanded to observe the full moon of the Paschal month, after the vernal equinox, to the end, that the Sunday may first make the day longer than the night, and then the moon may show to the world, her full orb of light. Book 5, Chapter 21 that valley, which you beheld terrible with flaming fire and freezing cold, is the place in which the souls, of those are tried and punished, who delaying to confess and amend their crimes, at length have recourse to repentance at the point of death, and so go forth from the body. But nevertheless because they, even at their death, confessed and repented, they shall all be received into the kingdom of heaven, at the day of judgment. But many are succored before the day of judgment, by the prayers of the living, and their alms and fasting, and more especially by the celebration of masses. Moreover that foul flaming pit which you saw, is the mouth of hell, into which whosoever falls shall never be delivered, to all eternity. Book 5, Chapter 12